Hello, we are now live. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever time you happen to be catching us here. And, and welcome to well, welcome to you to the show. Um, this is C CEO Mom Talk. Sorry, it's been a long week with the holidays. I'm super excited to have you here, whether you're watching the replay or you're here live with us. Um, so the show, if you've never seen it, is really about highlighting women entrepreneurs and kind of talking about the journey that they've gone through and, you know, any tips that they've learned, any secrets or, um, you know, that sort of thing in being an entrepreneur. So, again, I'm super excited that you've decided to join us. My guest today is somebody that I um met in the last couple of years um, and I actually met them through my business and I have been nothing but impressed, amazed, astonished as I learn more and more about my guest. Um, and so I'm going to share just a little bit and I, you are going to hear me kind of read a little bit of her bio because I truly don't want to miss anything. Um, Shar McCready is a mom of, of three children, um, a wife, um, a passionate, passionate woman. Uh, she has been an entrepreneur all the way back to lemonade stands. And I know all of us have, have kind of done that lemonade stand or a lot of us at one time or another, but that really was what kind of was the springstone for her on, you know, kind of getting into the entrepreneur world. She also became a top candy seller in her Camp Fire Girls of America. I could totally, totally see that. Um, and then as she became an adult, she really got engaged in, in, being an entrepreneur and what that looks like. And I'll let her tell you more. But prior to becoming a full time entrepreneur, this is the part that kind of blows my mind a lot um, as I've gotten to know more about her. And it makes me understand as well more about how she, um, you know, builds her business and, and where that came from. So I'm going to read this part because I don't want to miss a single word of it. Um, Char graduated from the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Um, with a superintendent's honors, and I'll let her, you know, talk more about that. Um, she was part of the first decade of classes with women admitted to the academy. I just, that blows me away. I think that is amazing. Um, you know, we think it's just normal and natural for women to be part of the military, but it hasn't always been that way. And there were women who really made that happen for, for us. Um, and Char is one of those. And that, that's where I just, I, you know, bow down because it takes a special type of woman to really be able to have that strength and power to, to do that. Cause in a man's world, it's not always that easy. So I think that is just amazing. Um, she was career active duty officer in the United States Air Force and is now a retired veteran. She was 911 Pentagon survivor and a post cancer thriver. Um, and I, the stories that we've shared and the things I've learned about her, her strength, I thought I was a strong woman. Oh my goodness, I don't even hold a candle to some of the things that she has been through. So without further ado, I want to welcome Shar McCready to our show. So super excited and blessed to have you with us, Shar. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy, for having me. I'm super excited to be here as well. That's uh, quite an introduction there. It's always interesting to have someone else read or share something about you and you realize, oh, yeah, I guess I did do that, right? Perspective. <laughs> I Yeah, I, I want you to to maybe, you know, kind of put a little more light on, on what I just shared. You know, I obviously read off what, you know, what you shared with me, but maybe you could just add some more color because it truly is um, inspiring. And I think you can be a, a model for a lot of women that, you know, think, oh, God, can I do this? Do I have the strength? Do I have this? Do I have that? You've been through a lot. You know, could you maybe share some highlight reel of that with sure. us? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem at all. Well, first and foremost, uh, I want everyone watching to know that two things. Um, first, for me, my Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, is where my strength comes from. And I'm just the vessel that is to take the journey. And that is something I definitely learned and a part of my journey that I'll, I'll get to eventually. And the second thing is simply that, we all have a giant within right inside here and we have to allow her to come live full time on the outside. And that in and of itself is a process and it's step by step, just continuing to move along. And we all have a different speed and our journey looks different. The key is that we journey together and that we stay journeying together, right? Some days are gonna feel like I can run a marathon and other days I'm gonna feel like I'm low crawling through the, through the quicksand and everything in between, right? That's just part of it. And so my journey began, as Sandy said, uh, way back in Campfire Girls of America. And you must know that I'm very competitive. So when it was time, <laughs> no. 
Really? <laughs> when it was time to go out and sell candy, and Almond Roca was always my best seller, just so you know. I still remember that. And it's still around today. I actually yes. got a, a little piece of it for Christmas from a friend. I was so excited. But um, <laughs> that really just taught me that anything was possible and helped me learn to talk to people no matter what. And if I was excited about what I was doing, everyone always bought something. And sometimes even my neighbors around my parents' home where I grew up in North Denver, if they weren't going to buy something because I was so excited, they just hand me a couple bucks and go, here, <laughs> you know, I, I know you're going to do great. Yeah. And so that was an interesting journey as I recall it now. And then fast forward, I was in the military, I uh, had gone through, gone through the Air Force Academy. That was a dream and a goal of mine from the time of age six. And I accomplished that. I graduated high school in two years and headed off to the academy as one of one of the youngsters there. My parents actually had to sign me into the academy because I was not of legal age until I was there almost two years, um, about 18 months, I guess. Kind of funny to wow, think about I that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then during that time, I always thought in the back of my mind, I wonder what else there is, what else I could do. And my dad was an entrepreneur my entire life. And my mom, my mom kind of was as well to an extent um, in my high school years. But it was really my dad that I realized in my late 20s, early 30s that showed me the example of traditional entrepreneurism. He owned a print shop in Denver and was extremely successful. Um, for me, I had an opportunity to help my mom create something in an entrepreneurial realm. And I, I had not um, seen my mom celebrate herself. An accomplishment. She she was around for us. She did everything that we needed. She was our taxi cab. She was our our chef, right? Um, yeah. Our housekeeper. Everything that we needed. And I had a chance to help her win in an entrepreneurial realm. And that's really where it began for me as an adult. And never in my wildest wildest dreams did I think that that little itty bitty tiny beginning for me that created a big win for my mom would set off this trajectory and a whole new rocket ship of entrepreneurism that is now in its 27th year. And I've had great success. I'm mostly in the network marketing direct selling space. They have owned some traditional businesses and uh, having a ton of fun now. That's awesome. You brought something up um, that I wanted to see if you could elaborate on a little bit. And you said about the giant within us. And, you know, I know in talking to different friends and that, you know, we a lot a lot of different people feel like there's something they can't always describe it. There's something inside that there's got to be something more, something bigger. But so many people are scared to, you know, I, I know you always say to me, be your better self each day. And that's the best you can do. Um, how do you do that? How do you sometimes figure out what it is, you know, in you that you want to bring out? What does that journey look like? Well, that's a really good question because I don't know that it's really very cookie cutter, you know. Um, I, I think that really became apparent to me back in my health journey. And I'll allude to that because you did say a little bit about that in my bio. So I battled cancer for 15 and a half years, um, not consecutively. So it was about a 20 year period total of battling the disease. And in that space of time, I was um, really at, at physical life's end a couple of different times. And there was one specific time during that, that I really just was at my wit's end. I didn't know what else to do. I was so tired of feeling sick and tired, physically ill. My emotions were shot, had no zeal for life anymore. And I just remember laying on the ground and just crying out to God and saying, you know, what's what's going on? How do we do this better? I, I know that either I'm going to heal from this because of you or it's time to go home. And I didn't have the will to live at that time. And it was kind of in that moment that I realized that surrendering and acknowledging a higher power um, for me is where what started my healing and just being aware of every little thought that goes in our head what we're saying to ourselves. Yes, there's a book by that title as well. But literally, what are those conversations and acknowledging our habits each and every day? What does it look like from the moment your eyes open? What do you first think? What do you do? What do you say? And then those little activities. And I've had people tell me, oh, it sounds so rigid. And you know, at first, it felt rigid to me too. But it is being in total awareness of everything that we're doing, thinking and saying, because the sum of those actions that seem little at the time create a monstrosity 
And we better have it be the monstrosity that we want to help us really embrace all of our talents and our gifts and our dreams and our goals. And I think journaling is one of those really huge components to that is emptying out your soul from the depths way down here onto paper or somewhere where you can see it and read it and really decide, you know, what is it that you really want out of life? If time and money were no object, what would you create? What would, who would you be? How would you help other people? And then acknowledging the fact that, okay, maybe some of my daily habits, i.e. too much time on social media or watching TV or avoiding by doing stuff, but even though you're going to the gym, maybe you're avoiding other activities by staying in the gym two and three and four hours because that's a comfort place for you, right? To right. then create in step-by-step -step activity the life that you want. It really is being intentional with every moment because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. You know, you and I are no different than Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or the best NFL football player or professional athlete or Olympian or entrepreneur or anyone, right, of all time. We're yeah. the same. It's all about what we choose to do with those same minutes that those people that we consider great at what they do. And they just happen to get the public media eye. But that doesn't mean anything about the greatness that we each have within us. Yeah, I think you hit on something um, when you said about living with intention. I, you know, I was just having this conversation with my younger son today. And, you know, it's our year is going to go by no matter what. So yeah. if we don't live with intention and think about what we want. You know, we, we were just realizing that we had our just, you know, moved to California and it's, it's been two and a half years already. And that two and a half years just flew by and we're like, Oh my God. And I, I said, I'm like, if we don't do something different this next year, we're going to get to three and a half years and it's going to look the same. So you really do have to live with intention and what do you want your life to look like? You know, so it's, Absolutely. As an entrepreneur, as I'm doing my 2018 goals and starting to look at what do I want to achieve, I'm going to draw that roadmap out or otherwise, God knows what I'm going to achieve. You know, you got to have intention of where you're going. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that really is the key to any change that is made is that the same results that you got this year are going to be the same unless you change something. It may not be 500 things, right? But it may be pivoting one thing just enough that creates a massively different result when compounded with time and that's exactly where it's at it's just like compound interest our yeah. times are different right whatever we compound and repeat day over day over day times 365 or 66 days in a year gives us the result that we want so the pivot doesn't have to be a total 360 or even a 180 it's usually 10 or 20 degrees if you will and the results can be massively different yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So on that vein, let me ask you a question. You know, what do you wish you had known um, now before you started your first business? So for somebody who's thinking about starting a business, what, what's a good piece of advice of something they should think about or or consider before starting their first business? I think the biggest biggest thing was actually twofold. First of all, talk to people already doing what you think you want to do, whether it's an alliance with a certain company or in a certain field as an entrepreneur. Like if I was a doctor wanting to start a unique practice as some sort of holistic doctor, because that's probably what I would do, then I would go talk to people already doing it. I would not be talking to people that have no experience in the field that definitely are not where I want to be financially or otherwise in my life because those are called naysayers. <laughs> and they're going to give you feedback based on the lid that they have already hit in their head. So you got to talk to people that have gone before you and then you figure out and carve out your niche. So that's what I would do. And then I would listen to those that have gone before you because, um, you know, the, the saying always goes, if, you know, don't don't listen to those that are that are not doing it or the naysayers. Right. Because those that believe that they can are just doing and creating it. So go out there and give it a shot. And then if you're going to start a business, it's not like um, changing your, your food intake, right? You may notice some results in 30 or 60 days. And the same with entrepreneurism. But in all honesty, you got to give it a minimum 12 months, depending on what kind, type of entrepreneur business that you start. And that 12 months needs to be on point. 
not a little bit here and a little bit there, but 12 solid months of work as if you were working your normal job that you may already have, and then evaluate and go, okay, is entrepreneurship for me or not? Right. right. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's really good, really good advice. Good advice. Oh, do you oh, hear an echo? Hear echo? Yes, I have an, an echo on my end. All right, let me see. That's better. Okay. Um, because I think we tend to, when we want to do something, we tend to go to our friends, our family, and ask for their opinion, but they're not the ones that are about to do it. And they're going to be negative because that's not in there, like you said, their lids. So I think that's such good advice for anybody is to to look at the people who have the lifestyle you want and, you know, and the business you may want and talk to them before going to someone else. What would you say is the best piece of advice you ever got from someone or what was the best piece? You know, my dad always told me that I could do and be anything I wanted to be. And I took that to heart, I think subconsciously as a kid. And I just never saw obstacles. I just figured that if it was put within me and when I was younger, my my spirit walk wasn't as strong as it is now, but I could go out and create it. Right. And it wasn't about being mean or rude to other people. It was just about being my best every single day and always giving 100 percent always doing all of my homework and turning it in on time because my leader, i.e. the teacher of that class, that's what they asked me to do, right? So I guess that's being a good follower first. And then in that followership, you become a leader by carving out your niche. And so I've just always believed that. And, um, you know, life sometimes throws us curveballs and and uh, aging through life wisdom is no joke. So sometimes we forget that that is so clear when we're kids. And that is a place kind of that I'm working on now to just remember that each of us can be absolutely great in our own gifts and talents and go out and create and be all that we're intended to. And oh, by the way, when we create alliances with other people, we can even do it better. Absolutely. I'm just going to say moms take note of that piece of advice because it's a piece I wish somebody had given me earlier for my kids and remember to tell your kids every day they can do and be anything they want because I think we we start to somehow we lose that dream we lose that spirit to believe that to be true and we get into reality um, whatever that is and I think it's really important to for kids to know that anything's possible and they don't have to fall into a mold or you know unfortunately our school system I don't think inspires that at all and so I think that's such a, a great piece of advice for moms to give to their kids now. Celebrate our differences. Being different doesn't mean bad. Yeah. Stand out, man. Don't be, don't be afraid to stand out. Hence my nice cherry <laughs> for the holidays. <laughs> Nars never afraid to stand out. She stands high and tall. <laughs> I love that about you. So on the opposite side, what's the worst piece of advice you've gotten? Hmm, worst piece of advice. I think the worst piece of advice really never came from a person. I think it came from my not paying attention to my intuitive spirit. And, you know, that just creates life bumps along the way. And uh, my journey has certainly not been without lots of bumps, right? I mean, we've kind of hit the highlight reel in my bio and my story. But really, you know, our skills and talents are grown in the valleys and we're celebrated in the peaks and we inspire other people in the peaks. And I've had lots of valleys and just, you know, recently come through a valley in life. And when we don't listen to our intuition, I think it's there on purpose. And sometimes we can get a little headstrong over mm -hmm. it and we counteract it ourselves and we just become a bulldozer and off we go. And that's probably got me in trouble more times than any advice really that I've gotten from a person. I've become pretty good, I think, uh, since I joined the military about, you know, how much you really listen to what other people say, because most of it's just talk kind of like the Peanuts gang, really, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> um, so I, I think for me, probably, it was just not paying attention to my intuition. And uh, then, you know, you live with those consequences, you course correct, and then you move on. It doesn't mean that you've lost or you have to quit or you're a failure or any of those labels that I see so many people go through because it got hard for a second, right? Life isn't easy, folks. I, yeah, I'm learning that lesson very hard, um, hardly about listening to my intuition and not overthinking it. I am probably the worst for the gremlins in my head that start talking instead of going with what the gut says. So 
that is definitely, I think, true of a lot of people, especially women. We tend to overanalyze everything instead of going with what we know to be true. Um, so I can absolutely relate. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think a story that I was always told, I don't even know where the story came from, is that as an entrepreneur and especially as a female, that it's very important that we not spend a whole lot of time in the neighborhood called our mind by ourselves very <laughs> often because more times than not, it does result in a little poor decision making or increased angst or anxiety when we really didn't need to have any of that. So I always you know, try and tell my people that when you find yourself doing that, pick up the phone and call me, right? Call someone who's where you want to be. And that's how you learn how to navigate new circumstances that maybe you haven't personally had to navigate up to that point in your life. Yeah, that's good advice and kind of goes to my next question is, you know, what do you do on a daily basis to grow as an entrepreneur? Because I know you're very much into always being your best version. So what do you do daily that kind of helps you do that? Well, I keep a calendar and I forgot I was going to grab it here. I think having a paper calendar. Yes, I keep an electronic calendar for um, general purposes and to communicate with my family so they kind of have an idea where I'm at. But I really believe um, because of how the brain works, there's a different part of the brain that's enacted when you take paper and you put it pen to paper um, with the calendar. And so I do schedule my time and my time starts about um, 5, 530 every morning where I wake up and I have a little bit of quiet time and then I go to the gym and I work to get the gym out of the way whatever working out looks to you. For me, I like to go to the gym. I'm a weightlifter. I'm an Olympic weightlifter by training. That's where I do my do my deal. When it's not um, the winter time, and I'm currently in Arizona, so the winter's a little different than those of you in Pennsylvania, um, perhaps. <laughs> but it is cooler, so I don't like to be outside because I am temperature sensitive due to my cancer journey. So I do outside stuff when it's warmer out. But whatever that looks like to you, first of all, it gets you up and moving. It does biochemistry wise, it wakes your endorphins up, it gets your body going and alerts your brain and your nervous system so that you can then be productive. And oh, by the way, then your health and fitness piece is out of the way for the day so that as an entrepreneur, you can run. And for most of you, I know most entrepreneurs for a long time, they're juggling building a business and working a traditional job that has a schedule. And so those two things are going to take over the rest of your day and then whatever personal duties you may have woven in there. Um, I, you know, I schedule those appointments Mondays. Typically, I don't do a lot of outside appointments because that's my what I call my power day. And I line up and confirm all my appointments for the week. I get anything done in the office that needs to be done so that the rest of the time I can literally run full speed out and about, whether I'm going to you know, show um, show clients one-on-ones or small group gatherings about my business and business and the opportunities that things we're working on or if I'm going to networking events whether that's lunchtime events or after hours events or you know we have evening events a lot of times uh, in my business as well that allows me to run full speed and then at nighttime I'm not a big tv watcher I would love to burn every tv known to man other than if it could be used as a computer screen to share good information I just don't believe in that because um, I do believe in a saying that I heard before, it's the electronic income reducer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us spend too much time there. And again, that gets back to the beginning of the year. If you want 2018 to look different, you've got to do something different. And nothing you see on that screen is going to change your life. You have to get up and go do something with it. Um, I end my day reflecting on what I did well. I give myself a grade in my business on you know, how many new potential customers did I meet? If any, did I pique any interest? Did I have a chance to share my business products and services with anybody? And did I gain a new customer or did I gain a potential new um, business partner that could do, do some business work with me? And then I find myself when I do that consistently that my weeks, week over week, I'm far more productive. And I also believe in, um, you know, a little bit a little bit of rest. And so I take Sundays um, off from business activities. Typically, um, I take care of my disabled father when I am in Arizona and not uh, traveling for, for business or my daughter's business. And then Sunday night after I get him you know, tucked back in his place, then I prep for the week and get everything going. And if we've got laundry to do or food prep to do. And off we go. And part of my quiet time every day is, is personal growth time. It start, for me, it starts spiritually. And then, you know, I have a book that I'm reading with a mentor. 
or, um, you know, I've got a couple of folks I follow online that I listen to one of their um, uh, videos that they may have posted. You know, I get a good hour of personal development. And every time I'm doing cardio, that's what I listen to. I listen to personal development about my mindset and how it can become sharper and better. I love it. Yeah, uh, the calendar is, is definitely uh, I'm learning to be better at. And my friend, it is true. If it doesn't go in the calendar, it's not going to happen. Um, I like, too, that you said about working out. I just had that conversation today, too, about, you know, fueling the vessel that's going to, to take you there. And if you don't put gas in the car, you know, whether it be the right food, the, the workout, the, the sleep, all those things are really important. Because um, if you do start burning from both, you know, then you're not going to be any good in your business. Nope. It doesn't work. No. After my journey, for sure, let me tell you, that part is vitally important to me more than, and I didn't have a bad diet or really, really bad, um, you know, lifestyle habits back then. It just really illuminated for me the important importance in a drastic way of that piece. And when this is all good to go, let me tell you, you can be majorly highly productive with not very large pockets of time. Yeah. Yeah, I got asked that question today and I started, it made me to start really thinking like, you know, being my best self, what does that look like? And I thought, dang, that was when I was working out, when my weight was under control, when, you know, I felt, I think part of it for me, and I don't know if you feel the same thing, it's I have control. When, I, when I'm eating right and I'm working out and I'm doing all the things I need to, I feel like my life is a bit more controlled than when I'm just all over the place then I and I find that drips over into my business as well so for me some of it is just having a routine having a system in place and not just winging everything every day oh absolutely a hundred percent and you know that becomes empowering and addictive in a good way it's the same endorphins that create negative addictions like alcohol and substance abuse it's those same endorphins and when we're being productive and we feel good because we've eaten well we've worked out that those same endorphins activate and that becomes addictive and can be good addictive fuel to push an entrepreneur into creating versus the opposite end that are destructive habits. Yeah, definitely. And I think that almost maybe partially answers this question, but I'll let you expand if you think there's more to it. Um, my question was, you know, do you believe there's a winning formula for being successful, you know, a successful entrepreneur? And, you know, what is your winning formula, would you say, to being a successful entrepreneur? Like you said, you've had several businesses. You had a very successful business. You've got another successful business now. You've done a lot of different things. There's got to be some some common threads that you found through those that have made you successful. What would you yeah. say? Those? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think kind of my schedule has become my formula, if you will, um, more than anything, it's it's literally going deciding, okay, what it is, what is it that I want to create? And then having to break that down, it's like eating the elephant one bite at a time. Yeah. And then you have to decide, okay, what does that smallest piece of accomplishment look like for me to win at this particular thing, right? Whatever I'm trying to create or goal I'm trying to teach. And then you just break that, break that down literally into um daily daily activities that you go and do to win at that goal and then you eva evaluate day by day week over week and so there's small course corrections that you may need to make along the way and other than that it's just really truly acting with intention you know maybe for me I'm I'll be honest I'm a huge sports fan I love sports I <laughs> you know football's my gig but Watching that on TV or going to games, I decided I was going to give up because it was more important for the time I would spend supporting someone else's dream, right? And that's all they're doing. They're just pursuing and living their dream. And right. for any of us to pursue and live our dream, there's no stadium or lights or media or anyone else to be present required. We've just become accustomed to it in our culture in the States. And yeah. so for me, that was being intentional about giving that time up when really it wasn't giving up anything. It was giving myself more time to be intentional about going and blessing other people with what I have to offer because I know what I have is an amazing gift and creating my own dream because 
even though I love Peyton Manning and I grew up with John Elway and John Elway's dad's a friend of my dad's, um, they don't really particularly care about what my dream is. You know, as a friend, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's great. But in activity, they're not standing on the sidelines going, okay, go, go for it, go for it. That's <laughs> my job, right? To go out and create. And I just think that that is a place that so many times um, entrepreneurs, we, we can get caught up because we want a friend, we want a partner. And it can be a lonely journey sometimes as we're growing as the person, right? And we're learning a new skill set and applying that skill set and kind of carving out this road that's never been carved in our life before. It's It can mess with your head a little bit. And keeping mm -hmm. all those other things in balance and finding mentors and always listening to those that have gone before you instead of those that are standing on the sidelines watching to see what you do will serve you well. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to ask you one last question because I know we're just we're a little over our time and this is totally off the books. Um, but I know that you have been a huge support to your daughter who has her own career and has a career in a very tough, uh, tough industry. Um, having grown up in LA, um, and I'll let you talk about what she does. But for those moms out there who have kids who, you know, have dreams like that and want to do stuff, what advice would you give them to to one encourage their kids Two, i think what i respect so much about you and the relationship that you're having with your daughter and acting as her manager and that is the foundation that you've built for her and the structure that she walks in so that she's going to be a grounded person no matter how successful she comes and that's not always easy you, you see different you know things happen so for anybody who's got kids who have big dreams and have talents like your daughter, what, what advice would you give them? Ooh, well, I know. First of all, be <laughs> courageous. Thanks for putting me on the spot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you can handle it or I wouldn't. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I, I really think it, for me, it starts with courage. And um, if I would do anything different than what we've done in this last couple of years, it would be that three years ago, I would have had the courage to make the change in the way my daughter is schooled. Um, at that time, instead of what we just did um, coming up on 18 months, two years ago. So we homeschool now. We use an online program that's incredibly supportive. It's got structure there. So I didn't have to be the brainchild of everything. It gives us an umbrella to work within and really d help her look at what does it look like to pursue my dream. And so her dream has always been to be in the acting and modeling world since she was age six. She'll soon be 17. And um, coming up in the springtime will be two years ago that uh, I kind of had had enough about the talk and the chatter. And here's something that I think we as women are really good and men the same. Don't get me wrong. I just think we're as women, we tend to be bigger chatterers in our heads sometimes than a lot of guys. They tend to take action first and then kind of go about it a little different way. But she'd always talked about it and talked about it. And this mom had had enough of hearing. She was not going to audition. She was not attempting to try. And I just believe we have to teach our kids how to try. And part of doing that is to break through the fear. And you just have to muster up the courage and band together as a family and support your kid instead of telling them, oh, you'll never say, how can we, right? How can we do that? What would that look like to you? So she went to an open call um, for a modeling agency, a very prestigious one and was signed on the spot. And it's been literally a rocket ship since then. I can't tell you that any of the things that have happened that we thought would happen this fast, um, this this fall to kick off fall fashion season in September, she was featured on the cover of Glamour magazine worldwide. That was just unbelievable for us and a, a really awesome thing to watch, you know, watch your child just begin to realize her her own gifts and talents that are totally different from mine in a totally different industry and that because I had the courage decades to go to try entrepreneurism, that piece isn't so scary to me. And so and I can now impart those skills to her. And, uh, you know, and we homeschool so that we're mobile because she gets calls sometimes with about 36 hours to 48 hours notice that we need to be here, there or everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of what I do, we get to do that. And I'm grateful that, um, you know, back when I could work. So here's a little tip I think that I didn't touch on that I really learned during my health journey as well is that when you are able, meaning you're physically able, there's really nothing holding you back other than your decision. You have to go out and create and to work as hard as you possibly can. And hard doesn't mean 500 hours at a time. 
It just means giving 110% on the time you decide to create your entrepreneur journey. So that when and if life gives you a curveball, you don't have to sweat it, right? And so all those years ago when I joined the military and I stayed until I got a retirement, and now as an entrepreneur, I'm a mobilepreneur. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I don't have to be in a specific location so that when this curveball, which happened to be a good curveball, came for my daughter, we could fully say yes as a family. And there's nothing more empowering than that, I think. You know, versus when my cancer came and came and came and came and came, it kept coming back. Um, you know, we still could say yes to battling a little differently and attacking a little differently because I had extra income coming in on the side from my side hustle that's now my full time hustle. And so that's, um, you know, that's really, I think, is just taking what we've learned and then just being a student. I've had to be a student just as much as she has in this industry and going, OK, the way we approached that worked pretty well and we got good feedback or, hey, we definitely don't want to do that. Or did you see what happened over there? We're not going to be like that incident was. And then you just put it all together with an agreement that, hey, this is my part. This is your part. and We're in this together. And the moment that one of us is not doing our part, then we're not in it together anymore. I and mean, we need to reevaluate. Is this really what we're supposed to be doing or not? And and that's I mean, I think that's really all that we do. I'm as someone that's watched us, you might be able to reflect differently. But I think those are the keys that have helped us so far. And she's just uh, you know blossoming and taking off. And we have some new goals now based on these uh, leaps of faith that we took this last year and uh, look for her soon in New York City and possibly Milan, Italy. Oh, I think that's awesome. I think the only thing I would add that I've noticed and I think has probably really helped her in her career is that you started her at a very early age going to self-development, going to training, being part of that in your entrepreneurial walk. I've seen her walk alongside of you. And, and as such, I definitely think she's more mature. She's got a smarter head on her. So I think, you know, I think as parents, that's a piece that we don't give to our kids and they don't get in school is that self-development. Um, whether you're going to be an entrepreneur or not, it, it helps you. Yeah, absolutely. It's just about being our best person self, no matter what it is that we do, because I think we have to also remember that none of us, to include our kids, are the career path that we choose. We are a person with divinely created with gifts and talents, and it's up to us to really grow those like a flower and allow them to fully blossom. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Shar. I really, really thank appreciate you. you joining us today. I This has been so powerful, and I'm so excited because I think there's so many good tidbits for entrepreneurs, but also as parents. I think you had some really good words of wisdom for you know parents in, in different areas. So I greatly appreciate you as a friend, as a colleague, as a mentor, and thank you for taking the time to join us. And all of my guests that have joined with us live, thank you. And those who are watching the replay, um, thank you so much for checking things out. Uh, we appreciate you, and, and I hope you get something great from this as well. So with that, I say good night, goodbye, good afternoon, <laughs> good morning, whatever it might be, and have a wonderful, blessed day. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>